When I returned home for the first time in few months, the house of memories where I grew up was being put up for sale. Since you were the one who said I could do whatever I wanted to do, I did it whatever I wanted to do. If the compensation needs to be paid, then you should be the one who should pay it. It's your own house. Ha! Huh. This is my revenge because you continuously looked down on me because I was poor. Go to hell! My husband, Ken, and my mother in law, Lisa, who grew up poor, sold the house without my permission while I was away and got the money from selling the house. And they deliberately violated the contract and laughed at me, the owner of the house, to pay for the compensation which would occur due to this incident. But they had no idea of the consequences that was going to happen. Their selfish action was trampling on the feelings of not only me, but also to my parents. I'll never forgive them for what they have done. I have to pay because it's my house. Huh. Yeah, you better hurry up and pay. If you say that, then this house is not owned by me. Huh? And my husband, Ken, and my mother in law, Lisa, is going to hell because of what they did all on their own. I have been married to my husband, Ken, for 10 years. Ken and I have known each other since we were kids and have been together since we were young. We are in what is called a marriage in which I have a significantly higher socioeconomic status compared to Ken. I have lived with my parents, who are business owners, and I have lived comfortably. Ken, on the other hand, grew up in a single parenthood family and didn't live a well off life. Nevertheless, my parents and I were attracted to Ken's personality, so we never worried about his background. In fact, I think my parents had always loved him as if he were their own son. My parents decided to move into my father's other house to spend their retirement comfortably, so we are now living together in my parents' house where my parents used to live. This was also my parents' plan to support us as much as possible. We should officially change the ownership for the house's contract soon. After that, the rest is yours to do as you please. You're thinking of moving at some point, right? Maybe you can use the money for that. A few months ago, my father told me that he was going to give me the parents' house. The house was all well cared for and was not at all inconvenient to live in, but it was too big for us who had decided not to have children. I thanked my parents, and even though it was before the ownership change, I slowly proceeded to deal with the real estate company. Hey, Ken! I told you to fill out this form. If I don't submit it today, we won't make it in time. How can we sell the house without this? Oh, just write it down then. You're only overreacting. If you submit it today, you'll make it in time. You don't have to tell me every single time, you know. Just do it on your own. Where did his kind and sincere personality go to? Since our marriage, Ken has become increasingly lazy and had left everything for me to do it. He routinely asks me to write very important documents on his behalf. If I refused, I would end up causing trouble to the family and thinking that if I do it, then everything would go peacefully, so I would just end up doing it myself. I wonder if he'd continue to treat me like a servant like this. We decided to sell the house we were currently living in together. We have also chosen a new house in a place that will be both beneficial for us. But I was worried about the future of my married life with Ken and spent my days wondering if this was the right thing to do or not. Then one day, I received a call that my parents had been seriously injured in a car accident and I rushed to visit them at the hospital. Although my parents survived, they were diagnosed with a total recovery time of six months and would need someone to support them for about three months. I'll ask Ken. I'll ask my company too if I could adjust my work schedule as well. I'll be the one to support you both. I am 
asked my husband if I could go home to my parents for an extended period of time while I supported them. To that, he said, It's okay, it's your thing. And he had easily agreed. But to be honest, his tone was more like he couldn't care less than being worried about my parents. Anyways, I could go support my parents now. But then, another problem arose in my mind. Would Ken be able to live all on his own while I'm gone? Ken is one of those people who can't do any house chores. He can probably manage to eat, but he's not able to wash his own clothes. And the idea of taking out the trash on a certain day of the week is never in his mind. I wouldn't want my house to become a garbage dump. I was a little hesitant, but I explained the situation to my mother in law, Lisa, and asked her to support Ken. Please feel free to use anything and do anything in the house as you like. Oh my, you're in a lot of trouble, aren't you, Mary? I'm sure your parents have enough money to hire someone to support them. Or are you just missing your own parents, Mary? Don't worry, I will take good care of my own son. So don't you worry, you could stay longer than three months if you want. Lisa loves Ken very much, and probably sees me as the woman who took her son away from her. I was uncomfortable with the sarcasm that she would say to me whenever we had conversations like this. However, I thanked Lisa while suppressing my annoyed feelings because I knew that she was the only one who I could rely on at the moment. Then, I only got what I needed and headed to where my parents were. Every day was very hectic and three months passed by so quickly and I couldn't really be in touch with Ken properly. But it was worth it and my parents were getting better day by day and once life after the hospitalization had settled down, I was ready to go home. I got into the car and hurried home. Leaving the natural surroundings of the town behind, I made my way through to the familiar landscape and arrived at home. But... What? The house was no longer the house I knew. A for sale sign was posted in front of the house and the real estate agency which was listed on the sign was unfamiliar to me. What's going on? I panicked and called Ken. On the other end of the line, I heard Ken snort out a little laugh, as if he was mocking me. I sold that house and moved back to my parents' house. I did everything for you while you were gone. I didn't understand a word my husband said, so I went straight to my in-law's house to have him explain the situation to me. When I arrived at my in-law's house, which was a five minute drive from my house, the first thing I saw was my personal belongings piled up at the front door. I was startled and confused and... Excuse me, I'm gonna pass by. The contractor who came up behind me rang the doorbell to the house exchanged some paperwork with Lisa and then loaded the pile of my personal belongings into his truck and left. And afterwards, Ken came out of the house and both Lisa and Ken looked happy as they were counting the money they had received from the contractor and I couldn't even seem to recognize them since they dressed all fancy and their car even had changed into a luxury car. Hey Lisa, what is this all about? I stormed up to Lisa in a semi-panic state. What are you even saying? I got rid of your stuff at that house for you. You bought all those useless stuff. I guess daughters like you don't know how to take care of your own stuff well since you were too well off. You are such an unfit wife to put your own parents before your own husband for such a long time. I feel so sorry for my Ken having such a scumbag wife. That's why I even told him to get a divorce from such a woman like you. Then Ken told me that the house was now in your name, so I decided to take it in exchange for alimony. 
I found a real estate company that would pay me a very good price for the house and sold it quickly. Since you were the one who said I could do whatever I wanted to do, I did whatever I wanted to do. Then Lisa showed me the contract she had with the real estate company, smiled condescendingly at me, and explained the whole story. The contract was dated about a month ago. But that house should have already been under a contract with another real estate company, right? And if it's my house, any contract without my signature would be invalid. You did it without even telling me, and now you've breached the contract, and they'll ask to pay compensation. In panic, I said this to Lisa about the consequences, but I already heard that from my Ken. But it was you who signed the contract to another real estate agency without even asking my son, right? That's none of my business. So all I did was what you did, doing everything on my own. I couldn't care less about who signed the contract and whatnot. It's what you do regularly, right? So if the compensation needs to be paid, then you should be the one who should pay it. It's your own house. She shrugged it off as she said that. It seems that she believes Ken's story, which was told only from a victimized perspective. I felt that there was nothing I could say to Lisa, so I looked at Ken's face as if to ask for help. But I was astonished to see that my husband was also looking at me with a sarcastic smile on his face, just like Lisa. Finally, this day had come. This is revenge, you know. You've really been making fun of me for being poor all my life, huh? I'm the only one in the family with a different standard of living and values. You and your parents must have found that amusing. I have always felt miserable when I was with you. If being poor is so funny to you, then I'll teach you about what money can do. I don't accept that you're the only one who has a nice, good life. Go to hell. Ken vented his resentment towards me and slapped me with the divorce papers, which were all signed except for my signature stamp. I could have had mom do everything and turned it in, but then it wouldn't have been a good revenge anyways. What an amazing dramatic turn of events. This is quite a scene where the young lady who made fun of the poor gets slapped down. There's no daddy or mommy here to help you out. Now, what are you going to do about it? Ken and Lisa seemed so satisfied with what they had done and looked really excited. But I was just so fed up with them that all my anger went away because both of them are making a fatal mistake. Look, I'm sorry to interrupt your very excited moment, but this house is not mine. You guys are the ones who are going to hell. Huh? Huh? I've decided to reveal everything. There was no reason to cover for them anymore. I took out a document from my bag and showed it to them. This is the official registry of that house. As we talked on the phone the other day, the ownership name has been changed to Ken's name. As you know, with my parents' accident, the process has been delaying. But it changed just a week ago when you both agreed to sell the house. Huh? I didn't hear anything about this. Of course you didn't. I called you to check it if I should mail it to you, but you didn't even listen to me at all and just told me to take care of it. You probably don't even remember this, but I double confirmed it with you if it was alright or not. Ken stared at the registry document and looked at me in disbelief. How could it be Ken's? Normally, if I was the parent, I would have given it to my daughter, you know? Lisa was also in shock and rushed to confront me. Well, this is what my parents wanted. 
my parents had always loved Ken like their own real son. They also respected you, Lisa, as a respectable person. When they decided to give us the house, my parents believed that Ken would always take good care of me and that it would be a way for them to show their appreciation to you, Lisa, who had worked so hard to raise such a fine husband. And yet, you not only betrayed me, but you also trampled on my parents' genuine feelings. Ken and Lisa turned pale as they learned of my parents' true feelings. Their hands, which were clamped over their mouths, were trembling. As I said before, this is going to be a big problem involving both real estate agencies. You should expect that they would definitely claim for a good amount of compensation. I will contact the real estate agency with whom I first signed the contract. So could you both just contact the real estate agency with whom you signed the contract on your own? I mean, I still can't believe that the real estate agency actually accepted your sloppy explanations and signed the contract. If you have an opinion, don't be a scum and do things like this, but say it to me earlier. It's not that you're poor because of money, you're poor because of your hearts. My tone became stronger and stronger, and finally I loudly accused both of them. And finally, I pulled out my cell phone to call the real estate agency, but... Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is not what I wanted. I was just sad because you left me. Anyway, let's work it out together as a married couple. Oh, I know. I could just buy the house that's on the market now and then call the old real estate agency about it and we could just pretend that this never happened. You're rich, so can't you do that? Please. This whole thing started because of my mother. Ken, who had been with Lisa this whole time, changed sides and rubbed up against me in a panicking manner. He was probably trying his best to get me in a better mood, but he didn't seem to realize how selfish he sounded. Hey, Ken! Are you betraying me now? I made all the arrangements for you! I can't believe that you'd abandon your own mother and putting your wife first. What a hurtless son. Oh? From what you said previously, it's scum to put parents first, right, Lisa? Then you're lucky that Ken is not a scum, aren't you? You should be saying that he's a fine son. <laughs> Lisa seemed indignant at her own son's betrayal but her own comment that she made previously bit her back, and she was unable to say anything anymore. That's right. You're the most important person to me right now, Mary. I'm going to change my attitude once again and do my very best. So... Don't get me wrong. No one said anything about forgiving you. Seeing that I had gotten Lisa to quiet down, Ken happily took my hand, but I briskly brushed his hand away and glared at him coldly. I was already fed up with your laziness to begin with. Besides, when things like this go wrong, you tend to blame other people, huh? And you leave people to take care of your own problems, huh? How can I even trust you to change your attitude? Let me say it clearly. I'm not your secretary or your servant. If you are an adult, you should at least take responsibility for your own actions. You will pay for this for the rest of your life. You and Lisa, both of you. With that, I snatched the divorce papers from Ken's hand, stamped my signature on the spot, and left the two of them who were both in a shock. After that, despite some troubles, the divorce from my ex-husband was successfully finalized. Ken and Lisa sued my family, claiming that they had just been cheated by my parents and that our family was responsible for compensation, but of course, they lost. As expected, they are now being held liable for compensation by both the real estate agencies, and I am told that they would have to pay a significant amount of money because of their malicious actions. On top of that, they seem to blame each other for each other's fault, and from this, it looks like that they will be at rock bottom for a long time. As for me, 
The company had arranged for me to continue working remotely so that I could support my parents. So, I'm going back to my parents' place and continuing to support them while I work. Honey, your bath is ready. Thank you. I'll wash the dishes so you get in the bath first today. You must be tired after your rehab session. Well, then you should get in, Mary. I'll get in later. I also want to clean the bathtub after anyways, so you should get in and relax in the bath, Mom. My parents are still undergoing rehab from the accident, but they are still supporting each other and spending time together happily. I began to live with my parents for the first time in a long time, and seeing the two of them forever getting along with each other, I think to myself about this. After seeing my parents, I realized what was missing in my marriage with Ken. I think that it was respect and consideration for each other. There are things that I could have done to be more considerate, but thinking back, I don't believe that Ken and Lisa had any such feelings for me. At first, I was quite sad and frustrated by the divorce from Ken, but now I can say with confidence that it was for the best. If I ever meet someone again, I'll have to be very careful the next time. I hope I never have to worry my dad and mom again. I decided that I would definitely take the lessons I felt from the incident with Ken and Lisa and apply these experiences to the rest of my life. And I would also remember and never forget to thank my parents as I started my new life at a new place.